you being a health nut, getting up six in the morning, running, doing all this shit like this, you're gonna live a long time. Oh man, I know what the fuck. That's that's predictable. Predictable. I need you to live on the motherfucking edge if I'm gonna fuck with you. And that's what the fuck the system requires. And it shows it because I I don't believe that it's just because Rick Ross got off a of fucking Universal Def Jam. I mean, have a fucking uh, Cali. Like, I, no, I don't believe it because Rick Ross was still giving us Rick Ross. It was still him. Just listen, the, the Mastermind. What was the uh, the, the one with uh, uh, with CeeLo or uh, the Mama song? Smile. I don't know what the fuck that was. Mastermind was crazy. But it's like niggas, people just don't take it in. But see, it's like when nigga was having them seizures and shit like that, nigga was, was on that shit. But now that you trying to live, oh, uh, no, nah, nigga ain't on that shit, man. Nigga ain't fucking with it. Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society. Today, we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I am Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement, and this is in hindsight. Today I got, I, got, I got a crazy thought in my mind. I got a thought, um, and I feel like it needs to be spoken about so that we can get more of a clear picture on what this rap trap really means um, to the health of anyone that enters this trap. Let's talk about Rick Ross right fast. This morning, or this afternoon, really, this afternoon, um, I thought about Rick Ross, and um, I, I, I must have thought about something else, and it had to do with um, health or, or being overweight or some shit like that, and it seems like Rick Ross was more, oh yeah, it was probably his video, he had a video um, or maybe I was just thinking, like, you know, Rick Ross, like, what a career he's had, but he's not dead. You know what I'm saying? He's not dead. He's still alive. What makes him no longer the man in the, in the front of the camera? Is it, you know, did, did, did he run his course? Has he done all that he's going to do with his career? Because he had a, um, his last album. I, I, and Rick Ross comes across my mind really easily because, pause, because, um, like, I, I've been on that shit. Like, Rick Ross, was he had that music that was the theme song to my life. You know what I'm saying? Um, that, and he's all, he can make these songs that really, his style, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to rap fast. I'm going to rap with this style. And, and he came in that era where you had to have a fucking style. You know what I'm saying? That's Jeezy. That's Gucci. That's Gotti. Um, that's Ross. That's Lil Jon. That's Pastor Troy. That's Ludacris. That's Nelly. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying that as if, okay, so um, it's a guy named Crank Lucas. He has a YouTube channel. You may be aware of him. Um, Crank Lucas, he does... He just one of the, uh, the people, the uh, YouTube people who do um, impersonations or impressions, impressions of artists and shit like that. And you know that you're a good artist if someone can mimic you. If somebody say, huh, you know who that is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, you know who these people are. And not just from their ad libs, but from their rapping style. And... That was that era where you had to have a fucking style. If you came out and sounded like somebody else, that was a fucking bad thing, not a good thing. You know, the, the world has been turned, this music, our world, has been turned on its fucking head when, for one, 
Drake can ghostwrite and nobody gives a fuck because he's a singer and a rapper. So it's like the line is blurred. But then you come out with a blatant violation with a nigga sounding just like somebody else with designer. And that shit goes. It worked. It should not have worked. And it worked. That let us know, the people who were looking at the game from a historical uh, vantage point, that let us know that we have no idea what the fuck is going on. And, like, we should have we should have been known because we had artists that should have never worked, work. Um, for for the, the artists that let me know that it was over with was Lil Yachty. I'm sure there was artists before that that came in as like, what the fuck? How in the fuck can this... But for me, it was Lil Yachty. When Lil Yachty came out, and this is how you know that you were how deep you're in this game. Certain things that happen in music change your fucking life. You understand? Okay, as, as, if you're a, if you're in this game, if you are feeding your family or you're getting money off of music, uh, and the way music is sold and, and distributed and, and even sounds, that should affect the way you get paid, period, point blank. When this shit went to the fucking internet, it changed people's lives. You know what I'm saying? It changed people's fucking lives. People had to immediately go into fucking retirement, early retirement. I, you can't compete with this shit. Um, just watching some shit earlier about, you know what I'm saying, um, fucking 18-year-old kid, he's a scammer. Um, Tens of millions, they, they said tens of millions, but it's probably just, you know what I'm saying, like a million dollars or some shit like that. But this is a black dude, black little kid was doing that shit from his fucking laptop at the house. Everything has went to this fucking internet and, and it that's scary to us tangible street niggas because it's like, that ain't how, like how do you rob a nigga? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you rob somebody? You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, you never had to be smart to rob somebody. Now, everything's on credit cards. Like, how the fuck do you rob somebody? And you want to rob somebody without that? But of course, of course. Uh, but listen to me. But listen to me. Also, today, I heard a nigga at an event talk about... um. Got a good tree on deck, got a good tree on deck, we're good, we're good, whatever, got that platinum cushion on deck, and a nigga who wanted the weed said, oh shit, that was up, was you take cash out? It wasn't even a fact that the nigga with the weed told him, yeah, I take everything. It was the fact that he even asked that fucking question. In my day, if you ask me to pay me for an illegal transaction online, I'm gonna think that you're, why, why would I let you clock that? You're clocking it at what time, where we were at, how much you paid, that's evidence. But now, you know, and I, that, that was, I guess, two years ago, motherfuckers told me motherfuckers is trapping off fucking Snapchat. Um, I guess you show motherfucker what you got, and then everybody, I don't know, like, I'm like, God damn. But I, I didn't really, I heard about it, I didn't, I saw this shit, I saw this shit with my own eyes. Nigga said, you gotta cash out. And then nigga immediately said, I take everything. So this is normal now. So, and, and, it, and it goes all the way back into that whole thing of, of, they gave us this dope shit. They put this curse on us, so they, they always... Uh, same thing with you know with the um, welfare and the child support shit, so they could have a tag on us, even if we don't want the tag. Um, we're, we're living in poverty. Here comes dope. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's just it's just throw it off. So it's just just you know, it changes shit. It changes shit. Um, so for me, it was Lil Yachty, Lil Yachty coming out and being accepted. And being successful, that was when I stopped rapping. I did do music, you know what I'm saying, up to 25 years old. And uh, when he came out, 
I, you know, I was, you know, in the streets with the shit, whatever like that. But when he came out, it's like, yeah, it's, it's it like I wouldn't, I wouldn't at that point in time. You know, I was at my strongest at, you know, 19 to 22 years old. That was my strongest moments. So, and after 22, I just, you know, charges all that kind of shit. Uh, that's why all that shit. So, I was already, you know, what I'm saying like, you know. Falling off the rap shit anyway, still doing it, but you know, I was at 24, had 10 songs on the radio. At that point, I had already had 10 songs on the radio, so it was like, yeah, nigga, doing the thing, but I wasn't making no fucking money off no rap. And which you won't make no money off rap for years. You'll put all your money into the shit and won't get shit back, and that's what you should expect. You shouldn't expect anything different. I'm gonna put my show, I'm gonna put my show on Spotify. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm eating pretty good off of fucking streaming, man. Yeah, man, got, uh, we got about ten dollars to stream. Like, come on, that bullshit, my nigga. Like, that shit hasn't changed that much to where a nigga is popping and niggas just don't know about. It. Yes, there are different genres of fucking music where you got uh, niggas like. Um, I wouldn't know the niggas, but you, you'll know the niggas when you see them on a the computer. Like the suicide boys and, and the motherfuckers who don't who don't be like showing their face. They be having masks on and shit like that. And they do like it's borderline fucking rock music. You know what I'm saying? Like grunge rap. You know what I'm saying? They just talk about killing and all this shit like like not just shooting a nigga. They talk about cutting motherfuckers' head off and engraving their name in people's bodies, all kind of shit like that. So that's kind of like a a, a, a cult situation in itself so I wouldn't know about it but as far as a nigga having trap music if you popping plus the fact nigga if you popping alright what's your name YouTube come on my nigga you don't even got a hundred views on your fucking video what the fuck are you talking about you make you making good money off of streams you're telling me that you're popping on title, but no one has came to YouTube or to your Instagram to fucking try to find you? Hold on, Chili. Stop playing, nigga. Stop playing. How much have you spent to put up, like, so what you did was you paid Spotify, Tidal, whatever, Apple Music, iTunes, whatever the fuck, to put you on a playlist with Drake, Rihanna, whatever the fuck, and so now people are listening to Drake, and inside that playlist, your shit comes on. Not that they want to listen to your fucking music, which is, listen, very good way to get people who don't want to hear your shit to hear your shit. All good. My thing is, first, how do you know your shit sounds good? But that's, I, that's a whole nother video. I'm going all the way off course. All the way off course. I need to do a whole nother video about that. Let's talk about Rick Ross and the rap trap. When Rick, before Rick Ross had that fucking uh, operation where they fucking cut his stomach in half and shit like that, and he lost all the weight, and he was represented for pairs and shit like that, he had a way about him um, that was. You know, uh, I'm on one. You know what I'm saying? Um, what was the song? Uh, it's not John. I keep saying John Doe. Um, Lord of the Child. I'm not a star. That uh, he just, you know, it was, it was that nigga was making real fucking music, dog. Like it was that shit was hard as fuck. But then, not, and he hasn't stopped. Same thing with Big Crit. Big Crit is kind of different, though, because he um, was always on the side of the rap trap. You know what I'm saying? Even though he did get kind of sucked up by the rap trap also, um, just with the business side of it, not with the way people viewed him. What I'm talking about is people, the way people viewing you directly affects your money, your freedom, or your health. And with Rick Ross, it affected two things. But the thing with him was, it happened in reverse. When Rick Ross was fat, I'm talking unhealthy fat. Niggas loved him. Ross, 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 Ross. You know what I'm saying? 
Um, and of course, he was with a, a label at that point, but still, like, I definitely had my thing. But still, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga was rocking the fuck out. Niggas fucked with him. It wasn't just because he, nigga, did, no. Niggas, like, he was making that music. Like, it, it, was, it, it was up for him. Once Rick Ross starts doing shit to better himself, and it happens to every fucking artist, and this is proof of the fucking rap trap. Once you start working out and shit, once you start trying to, you know, get healthy and all that shit like that, sales go down. They go down. You're not going to get healthy and still have people fucking with you and shit like that. You see, just any artist that you saw who came in and then after being around for a while, now they start being a health nut. They start lifting weights. They start getting big bust around it. Uh, Nelly did it. Um, that fucks up their image. Why does it fuck up your image? For some reason, you trying to live fucks up your tra trajectory as far as people fucking with you. People don't want to fuck with you if they know that you're gonna live. And that's just what the fuck it is. That's exactly what the fuck it is. If people know, this is this is why street niggas are so successful with women, because it's just that thrill. It's the, you know, uh, it's mysterious. And what's mysterious about it is, I don't know how long you're gonna be here. So you're living for the day. You being a health nut, getting up six in the morning, running, doing all this shit like this, you're gonna live a long time. Oh man, I know what the fuck, that, that's predictable. It's predictable. I need you to live on the motherfucking edge if I'm gonna fuck with you. And that's what the fuck the system requires. And it shows it because I, I don't believe that it's just because Rick Ross got off a fucking Universal Def Jam. I, I mean, have a fucking uh, Cali. I, no, I don't believe it because Rick Ross was still giving us Rick Ross, it was still him. Just listen, the mastermind. What was the, uh, the one with uh, uh, with CeeLo or uh, the mama song? Smile. I don't know what the fuck that was. The mastermind was crazy, but it's like niggas, people just don't take it in. But see, it's like when nigga was having them seizures and shit like that, nigga was, was on that shit, but now that you trying to live, oh no, nah, nigga ain't on that shit, man. Nigga ain't fucking with it. And it just, like, this is what this shit is about. This rap trap is about death and destruction. Death and destruction. If you go against this shit, if a rapper starts talking about positivity, living long, successful lives, and that's the reason why Nipsey couldn't be mainstream. You had a lot of fucking people, um, uh, uh, police officers talking about uh, we you heard about police officers, but just outside people saying, what's his song? What song does he have? And nobody could name a fucking song for him because it wasn't just mainstream. For, and that's, let, let's talk about that. For everybody who said, ah, oh, Nipsey, 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 were you radio station, Charlemagne, um, Hot 97, were y'all putting this shit in play like that? Were y'all trying to put this shit up there like that with, with him talking about real estate and, and, and black wealth and all these good things? Were y'all trying to push this shit to the top? Or are y'all doing the same thing that everybody else is, just trying to capitalize on the death of somebody else? Be for real. Say what it is. But that's different also. Rick Ross has always had live-ass music, not just good music, live as fuck. You can't deny Rick Ross and his hit-making skills. He hasn't lost that, but what he has lost is fucking and he lost an audience there is not as much glimmer and shine around rick ross without fuck the label and we're not going to use him getting off the label as a fucking reason why you know what i'm saying the interest the interest in rick ross has faded rick ross he had already made a name that, that's that's when you're supposed to get off the label you're supposed to get off the label once the label does for you what they're supposed to do is put you on a star status and then once you reach that star status you kick them back what they've given plus interest and now y'all split you're not supposed to stay with the label forever 
That, that's that's like that's why you see people like Jim Jones and these old rappers who don't have a career anymore. They're having to jump in with E1 or, or Empires and shit like that. Like because you need that type of backing. You don't want to just come in dry. You want somebody to invest with you. So that goddamn right, if I fail, I don't just fail on my own. No, nope. and it, but it'll be the same fucking people who say, yeah, man, E1 fucking me over, man, Empire fucking me over. If that's the, like, you know, like, you're not new to this. That's, it's, it, this shit is crazy as fuck. You're not new to this fucking game. You know exactly what a label wants, and you know exactly why a label invests in an artist. So how, why in the fuck, if you know all that shit, and you know how this shit is going to go, why in the fuck would you jump that that tells you everything? You jump back in the game with a, a label that's inferior to the label that you were on when you were at your height. They had you on retarded paper. Like it's and it's just that's that's how you know that shit is all bullshit. Nigga. What it comes down to is the reason why these motherfuckers drop four albums and call the mixtape the same way Megan fucking The Stallion did, drop a full album or call it a fucking mixtape is because they want to test the water. Nobody wants to let anybody know that they failed. Ah, uh, yeah, it didn't. Ah, uh, shit, ah. Uh, yeah, people aren't. That's the same reason why fucking uh, Cardi B had to come out with uh, the fuck she going through sil silicone poisoning. She having to come out and tell folks, oh, no, nah, the reason why my uh, sales uh, at my concerts is going down is because motherfuckers is thinking I'm in the hospital and shit like that. You have to explain that shit because blogs will pick that shit up and have the masses believing that you're not popping no more. And once that shit gets out there that you're not popping, now it's, it's uncool to fuck with Cardi B. It's uncool to fuck with goddamn Jim Jones. It's uncool to, you know what I'm saying? And that's why coming up in this shit, you want to watch how you come in because it's very, it's, it's high school all over again. High school shit. High, it, you know, you, you feel like it should be. That's why I have to salute that nigga um, Black. Six Black, Black, um, for not getting too close to motherfuckers to where... And, 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 and having all, his face all out here because a, a label or your agent will tell you the more pu publicity you get, you know what I'm saying, the higher your numbers are going to be, but that's only temporary. It's fucked up as risk and reward ratio on having your face out there all the time and shit and just having everything publicized because... We want to know, but then we shouldn't know. We want to know everything that's going on, but we really shouldn't know. Because sometimes you shouldn't meet your heroes and shit like that. Like, uh, since a kid, um, DMX was always my favorite rapper. Always my favorite rapper. But I don't want to meet DMX. Um, I thought I did, you know what I'm saying? But then you start seeing these interviews and it's all, you know what I'm saying, crazy and shit like that. It's like, no. Nah, I'd much rather keep the image in my mind that I had of him than to actually meet him and then he break that shit so far down that I cannot bring it back. Now I can't even stand to listen to your music because I know who's saying the words. So, as a celebrity, you want the people, once you make, it's, this shit is confusing, it's confusing as fuck. And I, I gotta do it on another video because I, the artists that I fuck with, um, the clients that I fuck with and shit like that. Let me say it like that. <laughs> so motherfuckers don't, ah, oh, shit, you should fuck with me too. No, no, no. Every artist I fuck with is paid. They paid, and that's why I give them advice. Hey, you should do this. And I tell them, the only way you're going to get your fucking numbers where they need to be at is if you show people who you are. The day and age we're at right now, people fall in love with the personality before they fall in love with the playlist. They don't give a fuck about your music. We've seen artists. We've seen this shit happen. This is this is this is one of the things that the biggest thing that changed from back in the day. Back in the day, you used to hear a song and don't know what the fuck the artist looked like until a year later. I remember when I first heard Plies. You would have an image in your head of what a nigga looked like. I thought Plies was a 
dread head, dark skin nigga would go on. This nigga crazy. Then you see a light skin nigga like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But that's how it used to be. The music would speak. And that's what niggas are trying to do with these Spotify, these playlists and shit like that. Nothing's going to beat YouTube, a place where everyone is. The difference between that bullshit and working your fucking, you know what I'm saying, YouTube will be only the people that have Spotify are going to hear your shit. But it's not guaranteed that they're going to go on YouTube and watch it. But the people who have Spotify watch YouTube. The people that don't have Spotify watch YouTube. So it's not a hard decision. Where the fuck should I go? I'm going to work on my fucking YouTube. How do you work on your YouTube? That's why the fuck you will come holler at me and I will fucking help you out with this shit. How you build your channel. Because it has to be built. Until they feel like they, until they, feel like they can fuck with you, they're not going to listen to you. You're just another fucking local rapper from another state that nobody wants to hear. Nobody likes local rappers, dog. No one likes them. They try to avoid them at all costs. So you're going to have to come at this shit different. So that's what the fuck I bring to people and shit. Um, and it's a gradual grind. But like I said, that's why it's, it's, it's a um, contradiction because I'll tell you, hey, let these people get to know you. But then I say, have some mysterious, like, have some mystery about yourself, but it'll be confusing to you because you don't know who I'm saying this to and who I'm saying this to. The person I'm saying this to is at one level. The person I'm saying this to is at a whole different level. You understand? But I just want to explain that to y'all. Um, the rap trap is about death and destruction. Anything that goes against death and destruction will get you kicked the fuck, you know what I'm saying, you, you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose people, the machine, the trap itself is gonna start working against you to where it's, when you was doing bullshit but you was working with the system, you was working with the death and destruction, shit will go unnoticed, you know, nobody will hear nothing, nobody will say nothing, now that you're promoting life through your actions, now all of a sudden shit just continues to just get Put out here, put out here, put out one loss after another one to where it looks like you're a fucking loser. And where we're at, it's sad to say, where we're at, your music will not override what we think you are. Tiger almost fucking got destroyed out this motherfucker, man. Tiger almost got destroyed. And as you see him now, he's going about this shit totally different. What a good example he is. He almost got fucking decimated by this shit. Loss after loss after loss after loss. You listen to Tiger? Oh, I see. You know what I'm saying? Like, you listen to Soldier Boy? That type of shit. I see what kind of nigga you is because that's really what it is. Like, the, the music you listen to describes the person that you want. You want to be fucking with, you know what I'm saying? So a nigga asks you what you listen to, you say, got it, Gucci, dog. Those are safe answers. I don't do the safe answers. I say Grim B, Cam Bada, um, Trey HD. I'm gonna tell you names that you haven't heard before. Get on my level, see where I'm at. But see, that also says what kind of person you are. If you have to say safe answers, that says that you a fucking nobody. If you can say what you listen to and then say why you listen, or don't say why, just make them go look at it, that means that you're a fucking somebody. Follower. Or leader. That's what it is. It's been a rap trap. Hey, yo, Conseco, make sure you hit that PayPal. I'll see y'all in a minute. Love. Anytime now, y'all. Anytime.